Hi everyone, it's Dr. Kratt here, and today I'm going to share a case with you that's unedited. Have you ever taken medications for your prostate so you don't have to get up at night and pee because it interrupts your sleep? Well, prostate medications, specifically for BPH, like Flomax, can affect the ability of your iris to dilate. We need your pupil to open up, to dilate, so that we have access to the cataract. And in certain cases, we can't dilate the pupil. Like this pupil here is no larger than about four millimeters or so, despite intracameral epinephrine. And so I'm gonna show you how I deal with it on a routine basis. So after we insert uh, numbing solution in the eye, viscoelastic gel to maintain the structure of the eye, of course we make a uh, incision, a three plane incision, first creating a groove and then entering the eye through that groove. I am going to put a device to expand the pupil. This one is called a Malugan ring. This is the one that I use most commonly. So I'm injecting viscoelastic posterior to the iris just to elevate it up and position it in a way that can allow me to implant the Malugan ring most easily. You could use iris hooks, but I typically reserve iris hooks just for special cases where I need the pupil dilated a lot in one specific area in complex cases. But the reason I don't prefer iris hooks is because you have to make more incisions. And so the less incisions, I think the better. Here I'm engaging the distal loop of the Malugan ring with the pupil border with the iris tissue, and then the right and left loops with the pupil border. The Malugan ring has four loops. So you wanna engage all four with the pupil border. And here I'm just trying to uh, manipulate it in a way where I can retract the inserter of the Malugan ring without uh, trapping the proximal loop. And then I use the little manipulator that comes with the Malugan ring. It's basically like a, like a Lester. And I'm gonna insert some extra viscoelastic because there's always some viscoelastic that escapes during implantation of the Malugan ring. And now I'm just centering the Malugan ring better. So now I'm ready to proceed with the case as normal. I'm going to create a capsulorexis, which is an opening in the anterior or front part of the cataract. The cataract is like a grape. It has a peel. This is the sharp tip capsulorexis forcep by MST. They do have another one that's a dull tip. The Malugan ring comes in two sizes, 6.25 millimeters and 7 millimeters. I typically use the 6.25. I just don't see the point in expanding and stretching the pupil more than that. If a iris dilates to 6.25, I don't use a Malugan ring. So I use the smaller one. I think it's less traumatic. After the opening in the capsule is completed, we use bound salt solution to inject some fluid to dissect the cataract material from the capsule. It's called the hydro dissection. And then after that, we just spin the lens material to make sure that it's free from the capsule. Because of the capsule, we wanna preserve it because that's gonna serve as the new home for the lens implant. The probe I'm inserting into the eye now is a phaco emulsification probe. It uses ultrasound energy to break up the cataract. I stabilize the eye with the instrument on the left. We break up the cataract into many pieces the cataract would not fit out of this incision. So we create a groove or a trench in the middle of the cataract like this, and then we crack it in half. So now we have two pieces. Then we rotate it 90 degrees and separate one of the hemispheres into, into, into another half. So now we have three pieces. And then finally, the last half, we're gonna crack it in half, and now we have four. And each one of these four quadrants will be removed one by one. So we bring it into the middle, vacuum it up, rotate another piece into position. Some cataracts are easier to take out than others. I typically like removing cataracts when they are at medium density. I think that minimizes the risk for the patient. The analogy I typically use is that of a ripened banana. We don't eat bananas when they're green. They are not ripe yet. And at the same time, you don't want to eat it when it's all brown. Ideally, it should be yellow. So that's 
The same for cataracts. A medium cataract, I think, provides an opportunity for the least amount of risk for surgery and still provides very good benefit for the patient. So here I'm removing the epinucleus, which is the layer right outside the central part of the cataract, and we have the cortex left. The cataract is like an onion, it has many layers, and so we have the outermost softest layer remaining in which we will remove with this IA handpiece or irrigation aspiration handpiece. This does not use any ultrasound. It's a very gentle tool we use during cataract surgery. So I'm grabbing some cortex from under the incision. I typically start with this area, not always, but usually I try to start with this area. And so you see some wrinkling when I'm vacuuming and the capsule gets into the port. And so it's very important to watch carefully and not pull at the capsule if you happen to vacuum it. There's just a little bit of cortex left. This capsule is very flimsy and keeps wanting to enter the aspiration port. Typically, I would polish with this very instrument, but I take it on a case-by-case -case basis, and so I think it's safer in this case to power wash the posterior capsule with balanced salt solution. And so you'll see some of those wisps and those epithelial cells fly off the posterior capsule as I irrigate them. Now that the cataract was removed from its capsule, the capsule is deflated. So I'm inflating it with this gel. So here the capsule has expanded. There's enough space to put in the lens implant. So I'm grabbing the lens implant. The instrument on the left is just meant to provide counter traction and stabilize the eye. The injector I'm inserting into the main incision. And now you should see the lens implant travel into the barrel of the injector and then into the eye. I inject it very slowly towards the end because I want to make sure I'm injecting it carefully and not damaging the capsule at all. It starts to unfold and then I use another instrument to position it inside the capsular bag. In a very shallow eye, shallow anterior chamber, the malugan ring can get in the way, but as long as you use enough viscoelastic and keep reinflating, it's usually not a problem. Now I'm just dialing the lens a little bit to make sure that it's seated properly. And then I'm going to remove the Malugan ring. I like to disengage the Malugan ring loops from the pupil border because I want to make sure that when I remove the ring from the eye, there is no iris tissue trapped uh, in the ring. And so then that would cause trauma to the pupil. So all of them are disengaged. And so now I'm just going to flip the little manipulator upside down and pull out of the eye. Usually three of them come out very easily. The last one is under the incision. So then I have to go kind of burp it out. Just pulling it out could cause some trauma. So I like to really burp it out and manipulate it so it comes out easily. So as you see towards the end there, it just came out really easily. Performing cataract surgery on a patient who's taking Flomax is routine these days. Even if someone's not on Flomax, I assume they have taken it in the past because if you've taken it in the past, let's say you were on it for six months or a year and then you haven't taken it for three years, your pupil might still not dilate even though it's been years since you've taken it. So I just assume everyone has taken Flomax before. And here I'm removing the viscoelastic gel from the eye. Now it's time to seal those incisions. So we're gonna hydrate the incision on the right side, left, and the roof. After hydrating the incisions to make sure they have a nice seal, we inject antibiotic in the eye and make sure the eye pressure is appropriate. This is a routine case of a patient who is taking Flomax. The pupil is small and we use a pupil expansion device, in this case, the Malugan ring to provide access to the cataract. And I hope you found the video helpful. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.